all is fair in love. Love's a crazy game. Two people bound to stay in love as one they say. For a woman, a job does not take the place of the child. For a woman without a child, cleaning does not create the space to be absolved of emptiness. Someone is crying. My imagination is a swirl. I cannot find the delineation of my being. Skin is irrelevant. There is no heaviness in the bones to anchor, no rudder in the form of thoughts for a bearing. My ears want my attention as they curve around to the lobe. I cannot listen. My breath is an ancient traveler in space. I have leapt free falling into the sky and I was exposed, no longer corporeal. I spread out in droplets. I have entered a realm. The crying one is me. The configuration that began at three has been tampered with, altered. My internal structure dispersed. I have entered a realm. Silence has a pulse. I am the crying one. I have no ink and cannot print myself. Suddenly the air has carried me to earth, yet I am not here. I am misrepresented by my face and body. My soul is a walnut, a relic, enlarged, waiting somewhere around the appendix. I walk upright through a sheet of ice, membrane of cold. It breaks, melts, puddles, seeps into, and makes a path. I hold a green fabric with hands metamorphosized into stones and cannot let go. The tyranny of obligation to conform, recognize my mission, yet I am no one. How could he? How could she, how could they do this to me? There is an order to justice. I am the only one who knows it. When someone you love gets sick, cruelty makes itself at home, whether the house is clean or not. Cruelty interrupts any attempted order unannounced in the form of sickness. It runs like a river through the heart of darkness. All you can do is clean around it. Sickness is cruelty. It steals the course of love. Egg tossing is not accidental. An acorn woodpecker will roll her egg to the edge of the nest by flicking it with its beak and toss it out, a strategy to keep the species going. Then there is brood parasitism, where a mother of one species will watch till the mother leaves and sneak her egg into its nest. She will remove one of the eggs and replace it to be raised by that other mother. She will have no part in taking care of her offspring. One species, what is it? Um, not a common cuckoo, a black-headed duck? Cowbird? No, no, no. It is the Eastern Phoebe. The Eastern Phoebe will care for an enormous different colored egg, even though it is obviously not her baby. What mother will leave her egg to be raised by another? The mechanical bull. The handle? has grooves for the fingers and the glove stays attached. You put your hand up to the knuckle, first the right hand and grip. The left hand goes below the right. The bull is still at first. And then the operator says, are you all set? And you nod. And then he says, okay, now. He flips the switch. 
At first, a wave is moving the behemoth, but soon it starts jolting up and down in a weird lilt, side to side, gradual acceleration. You, the rider, feel your legs too widely spread around an impossible circumference. There is nothing real about this surreal experience. It's not bull riding, but a mission that you didn't really say yes to because you were too drunk to decide. The bucking starts, only your two hands in the grip of an old and large cowhide glove between you and calamity in the form of real bodily harm or death. The whole thing is utterly wrong and now you can't let go. This is what it is like to have children. At three, I wanted to be airborne. Playing in the park was freedom large scabs on both knees. Once a scab had formed over the tights after sledding, I cut around the fabric and got in the tub waiting for the scab to dislodge itself. Meanwhile, I had to get the soles of my little Oxfords clean. I scrubbed until they were back to the beginning of themselves clean. I began to dance. I acted out every part on the Peter and the Rolf record. In ballet school, the boys wanted me as their partner in the Daggio class because I flew. We kept our eyes on each other from across the room. When the music began, I did a short run and leapt. He put his hands just so on my hips, hoisted me up above his head and I soared while he gracefully pointed his walking around feet. I didn't know it, but my life was in the service of being airborne. I lost myself in many art forms. I became what I loved. I believed I was Joni Mitchell, Van Morrison, and Marvin Gaye. On the outside, I looked like a young woman, but on the inside, I was air, no form. I molded to whatever was there. In college, I wore the suit of my boyfriend's dead father so I could assist in his grief. I became the nth degree of empathy. At 35, I woke up and thought, if I don't change, I won't ever have what I want in life. I was a feeler beyond all feelers. I watched my friends get married, have babies, do their lives. My career as an actress fit me, all the time flying during the work, then empty and waiting in a holding pattern until the next job. Reality was not airborne. I decided to try. I went to lectures on the Course in Miracles. I went to Al-Anon, a tiny room in the back of a church. Three octogenarian women ate from their Tupperware while I complained. I knew I belonged to the air, but it wasn't holding me anymore. I had to find a way to stay on earth. I prayed and discovered that praying in earnest did nothing to assure me of the, ex of the existence of God. My route to seeing around corners had been not made known. Because I let go of bargaining, I had an epiphany. I realized that an ungrown self had been running the show like a genie escaped from the bottle. What is an ungrown self? The cruelty of longing, the fragile fluttering of wings, heartbeats and prayers trapped in the walls of a sick room a crane bursts out, ceiling span of hope. Where is the nest to birth our dying ones? The scars I hold line my eyelids. No one sees them as I look out. I let go completely and meet my kindred soul. I recognize him by the kind smile that lines his mouth. He touches my eyes and sees me. Together, we move into the trees, wrap around roots, make a nest in the ground. We bury our dead deep, safe and sound. Suddenly, we feel them fresh and alive, enveloped in ether and airborne, they rise. We look at each other and know it's true. There is nothing but love. <laughs>